and uh, Dr. Ioannidis on the use of PCR, as well as I would like to add um, a, a, another um, level on, on that, um, uh, to focus also on the positive addictive value of PCR, not only on sensitivity and specificity. Thank you. So it's, it's the first time that we're dealing with uh, uh, an epidemic, a pandemic with massive use of PCR. Uh, we, we, we've never done that before. We, we had other tools, we had indirect epidemiological surveillance, we were trying to get a rough sense of, uh, well, this year maybe about half a billion people were infected with influenza, maybe 10% more, 20% more or less. Uh, now we are trying to capture every single case. I mean, th th this is uh, both exciting and also horrifying <laughs> uh, because people are, are just fixating on these numbers, you know, like 10 more cases, 100 more cases, 1,000 more cases, uh, 1 billion cases, uh, and, and it, it just makes no sense. Um, if we had epidemiological surveillance that was rigorous, then I would say that knowing the number of infections and active infections would be very useful. In the current environment, I think that testing does make sense because you, you manage to uh, detect people who have the virus. But as I said, we don't know who are those who are going to transmit. So probably we're quarantining far more than need to be quarantined. But that's okay. I mean, if, if, if we just tell people that probably you have nothing, <laughs> but please stay at home <laughs> for a few days, uh, you know, it's nothing. Uh, there's a slight chance, you know, especially if they're old, you know, with lots of very serious problems, it's not nothing to be exact. But, but the vast majority of the population, it's just nothing, but you know, please stay at home. Uh, but, you know, don't commit suicide. We had a 40 year old owner yeah. of the uh, of an elderly care home in, in Athens who committed suicide, uh, totally healthy, you know, my goodness, you know, yeah. he got a positive test and committed suicide. And, and you know, this person had zero chance of, of having a really uh, coronavirus claim his life. Uh, so I, I think that we should not panic because of all these tests. A positive test very rarely will mean that you will get seriously sick unless you are already seriously sick and this is why <laughs> you're testing yourself but then you don't need to get the test to tell you that yeah um and, and what about the positive predictive value of tests being done on the general population where we know that the, the prevalence of the of the infection is very low yeah well it depends on how you define infection i mean if you define infection as clinical syndrome yes most of the pcr tests mean nothing they're false positives I, I don't want to see it this way because it is a fragment of the virus that has been detected. So, so, so it's, strictly speaking, it's not necessarily a false positive. But again, it's an issue of definition. We have that genetic material there. Uh, most likely, it will not do anything to you. Most likely, you can just forget about it <laughs> until you really feel sick. Uh, if you want to, to define it as False positives against clinical infection, yes, the, the, the false positive rate is, is just enormous. It, it's, it's like 90% or, or more. Okay.